but without Dave Brown today, Davey's taking day off and going to uh, visit his home, and we're delighted for that. And uh, we're right along ringside, ready to go with another big championship wrestling. Before we do anything else, I want to introduce a guy to you that I've had the pleasure of working with before. Many of you wrestling fans will recognize him immediately because he certainly was one of the big stars of wrestling. He uh, encountered an unfortunate injury, and I want to introduce our special guest commentator today, Steve O. Steve, real pleasure to have you here today, babe. Well, thank you very much for the people in Lance. Thanks for the kind words. I want to say that uh, I want to thank the promotion and uh, everybody else involved uh, in bringing me down here. Uh, it's always a pleasure for me to come back to Memphis. I remember there it was a couple of months ago we were here describing the matches. Yeah, uh, we had a lot, lot of fun Memphis. doing them down at the We Coliseum. sure did. It was some kind of excitement. I'm looking forward to the same kind of excitement today. Well, the only thing about putting a guy this good looking on here with me is uh, <clears throat> i got to start looking out for my job now. Be careful. <laughs> Steve's going to be with us. And by the way, how uh, how is the wrist and all? Boy, that was a tragic injury that occurred to you. Well, it's, uh, it's healing up. I would say it's about 80% uh, back to its uh, full capacity. It's been over a year and a half now, yeah. but you know, Wrestlers all over the country know that uh, injury is a part of the game, and uh, you, you just have to grin and bear it, and uh, I'm trying to do the best I can. And I'm finding out that I, I think there's a better way to professional wrestling. You know, you, you go out night after night and punch people in the nose, but it's a lot easier to sit back here and describe it. Hey, I'll go along with that any day of the week. Okay, Steve, just make yourself to home, and by golly, we're going to have a great day because we do, in fact, have a sensational uh, bout starting off. The AWA has ordered a special Southern Heavyweight Championship match. You know, the controversial bout that uh, big Jacques Rougeau, the Montreal Canadian, uh, who had the title, had with Terry Taylor, who had formerly held it before Jacques. And due to the circumstances involved in um, Jimmy Lehner. Come on, Come on Jimmy. Listen. Oh, it's after the break. Jimmy, it's after the break. and I guess it'll be with us for a while, but we did get rid of the uh, perpetrators of it. Sitting here with Lance Russell with Steve O, who is our special guest commentator, and we're looking forward to the match coming up in just a moment. It is a special ordered AWA Southern Heavyweight title match, Steve. Um, the title uh, was held by uh, Terry Taylor. Jacques Rougeau won it from him. They had a return match in there. It was a no disqualification match, and that was a very important part of it, I think, when the outcome of it. Uh, during the end of the match, and we're going to see the highlights of it in just a moment, Dutch Mantell came down the ringside. He saw the same thing that I did in a lot of people, and that is the fact that it looked like Rougeau definitely hit Taylor with something. He jumped up, he told the referee about it. The referee at that point asked Rougeau to come over so that he could inspect him. Rougeau refused to do it. And uh, Paul Morton, the referee, told him, if you do not let me inspect you, I'm going to reverse the decision on it. Rougeau had, uh, had gotten the one, two, three, of course, after banging Taylor. And uh, Rougeau still refused to do it. So Paul Morton, um, as a matter of fact, did what he thought he had to do. There's been a lot of controversy, and that's why the AWA has ordered the bout that we're going to have. Right now, though, I'd like to take a look 
Let's just take a look at the highlights of that bout between Rujo and Terry Taylor for the Southern. On the left, zone. Terry Taylor, former champ, and Jacques Rujo on the right just missed. Scissoring Taylor. Taylor wheeled into the ropes. He goes over the top weights and stomps. Jacques Rujo. Oh, he lashes out with the right, takes two from Taylor. There. Two and a half minutes into the action, plenty of time. Ooh, and a side suplex. And with Taylor in the corner, Rujo pops him upside the head. Ooh, Rujo going after him, biting away at him. Big knee lift. Jock has incurred the wrath of a lot of fans and some wrestlers, too. Kid has so much talent, so great athletic ability. But he seems to be more prone these days to shortcuts. He almost had Taylor, and finally Terry got out of it. Ruscio trying to overpower him, but Taylor held right on to it. Sunset flip. One, two, no, no. Taylor whips him in again. Sunset flip. Taylor sits down. He may have it. Here comes referee. One. Not quite a two. Taylor, who had Rougeau for a 15 count. But the referee was down, Paul Morton holding his ribs. Where the very large Rujo piled into him on a leapfrog. Into the turnbuckles, Taylor coming after him. Rujo went to his tight. Glom Taylor, here comes Rujo for a cover. Count of one, count of two, and that's it. The winner is Jacques Rujo. Six minutes, 44 seconds. Rujo retains his Southern heavyweight title. Yep, well, it was at that point <clears throat> that uh, Dutch Mantel came out and jumped up on the ring to talk to the referee. We've got the match coming up. We want to get some comments from Jacques Rujo before we get into the ring out there and um, it has been ordered so that there will be a bout in here today for the title there's so many things i gotta say i don't know where to start lance first of all people who are true wrestling fans hear me out first of all i'm not playing my music right now because i'm gonna play it when i'm over in a minute with terry taylor but first thing I want them to know is, do you know, Lance Russell, what a no disqualification means? Yeah, I know what it means. That I means think everybody else does. you could go in the ring like Lawler, like Dundee, like everybody else does with a chair and hit somebody, and it's legal. Right? Now, I don't understand. I hit Terry right in the nose. I beat him one, two, three. I had my arm up, and they took my belt away from me. Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand, because you wouldn't let the referee inspect you the way he wanted. Well, let me tell you one thing. I'll, everybody out there and you wrestling boys in the room, that I believe from this day on that Paul Martin and Terry Taylor, it's lucky that you got politics behind you, because I'm the champion, and I always will be. Well, you're going to have to prove it right in here today. And, you're another have thing, and another thing, too, Dutch Mantel. I never had nothing to do with Dutch Mantel. And he came in the ring, and he had the people, he had Dutch Mantel, and he had Paul Morton on his side, and Ray, he's a champion now. Ray, Ray. I'm the champion, and I'm going to stay the champion, because I am the best thing that ever happened in this area. And I'm going to play that music when I come out. Later. All right, Jock, you got your opportunity. We're ready to go. Now for 
before the introductions, just climbing through the ropes and introducing from Montreal, Canada, coming in at 236 pounds, introducing Jacques Rougeau, Rougeau, and his opponent today, coming out of Vero Beach, Florida, and weighing in at 220 pounds, introducing Terry Taylor, Taylor. That Southern heavyweight belt is on the line. It's a very controversial ending. Just take care of the match. Okay, Jacques, we'll take care of the commentary down here. And the belt is out. Taylor's got it on the line. A very determined-looking Terry Taylor. Here we go, Steve. It sounds to me like uh, Jack Ruscio, a very determined young man. He might have lost his temper right, right before the match right there. This could be something very key going into this match. You can't go too hyped up, too... Too, too pumped up into this and you can make too many mistakes. I think one of the interesting things about this is the fact that these two guys used to be tag partners together and they were a very, very good tag team. But there's no love lost between them now, Steve. Well, I tell you, when it comes down to winning matches for titles and the money and the prestige that's involved, the, the friends are left behind in that squared circle. You can hear the fans. Boy, they're really getting behind Terry. A lot of excitement. A lot of past dues are going to be paid in this match. Terry Taylor turning that arm over on Jacques Ruscio. Taylor, who has the Southern heavyweight belt. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Referee getting on him about using that fist. But I tell you, with the kind of attitude between the both of them, I don't think that that's going to bother Terry too much. He'll do what he feels like he, Jacques's going to do to him, Steve. Well, it seems to me that the best hole of this match just might be the right cross to the nose. <laughs> I tell you, when, you, when people are, are talking about winning titles and then he, you get a title taken away from you. Look at here. Rujo, it looked to me like, went down into his trunks. The referee coming around. Banging away at Terry Taylor. And Hanging on tenaciously. boy, Terry. Great style in these young professional wrestlers. Now you have to hang on. One thing that he should be doing, though, he's got the man left up on his feet. There you go. He's taking the man over. Oh, he hangs on. You have to take the man down to the mat. Wearing that arm out. Dropping the knees in there. When the man is standing up. Ooh. You're both at the same advantage. Get the man down on the mat, and you can control him a lot better. His shoulders are down, and there's a case, Steve, that uh, I know that there are rings very close to you because all wrestlers have been through it, but sometimes you're so intense on getting out of a hole, you'll forget that the shoulders are down. He had a two count on him before he knew what happened. That's, that's true. Sometimes you get so caught up in trying to think of a hold, counter hold, the next series of moves that you might want to go into, you forget about the one, two, three. I don't think it'll happen right now with that title on the line. Oh, There's oh, too much at stake right. now. There he goes again. He hasn't come up with anything. Taylor's still in control. But he's not doing anything with it. Come on, Terry, stay on the offensive. I don't want to get too biased in this match, no, but I believe in order for you to be successful in wrestling, you have to be the aggressor. Terry acts like he's countering to Jacques. He doesn't do anything until Jacques does something, and then Terry comes back with it. Uh, in the corner here. Neither man not getting any ground. Taylor. He did go into his trunks that time. Taylor down on his knees as Rujo bangs him again. Yeah, I couldn't tell. They were, again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think. And you just saw it. The shiny metal. That's the way it appeared to me, Lance. Taylor definitely feeling the effects. He's knocked down. He's stunned in something. Not only that, he's right bleeding up. right up there above the left eye where Rujo popped him. Well, there's the situation where it's too bad the referee couldn't see what our camera sees. The referee's around behind, and Rujo definitely had something, looked like a chain or something in his hand. He goes under the arm and grabs it again as the referee inspects Terry Taylor. And he really Boy, that's has four or five times ruined. now. Look at Terry he's got Taylor a mess slow to get face. to his feet. Taylor hanging on the rope. Comes around one, two, and oh, we almost.
almost rang the bell on that Ooh. one. How did Terry Taylor find enough energy to kick out on that one? He is bleeding profusely from above that left eye, and Rougeau just slammed him again. In the corner, the referee can't be afraid to mess it up in there. He's got to get in there and push bodies around so he can see what's going on. Jock, very flagrant. Uh-oh, here's Dutch Mantel coming back out, and he jumps up on the ring. Can you hear what he's saying? No. He's saying something about the chain. He's trying to tell the referee about the chain. Oh, Rougeau! Rougeau pulled it out of his tights and just nailed Dutch Mantel. Knocked him off the hip. And Taylor rolls him Moving up. He rolls him up. Two, three. He got it. Terry Taylor wins it as Rougeau was paying more attention to Dutch Mantel than he was to Terry Taylor. And Taylor, bleeding, came up from the mat. And look out. Taking a little bit of more anger out from his loss there to Terry Taylor. And Dutch Mantel in the ring now. He's got him in the middle of the ring. He still has that chain. just pounding away on the tough Dutchman. But Terry Taylor wins the Southern Heavyweight title hey, man, match. What happened to you, man? You lost the match. What's that? That's my goal. You're a Pardon, I'm the champion. You listen to me. Uh, you don't have a belt. The only way... The only way Terry Taylor... There's a champion. It's because he's got the whole promotion. He's got the whole promotion behind his back. And he's got guys like Dutch Mantel that can't mind their own business. Let me tell you something. From now on, when I set up you, when I go in that ring, I'm going to take care of Taylor. And I'm going to give him the beating of his life, because you know it, and everybody else knows it. Mantel with that belt, and there goes Jacques Rougeau. <laughs> well, Dutch has a way of handling things himself. He doesn't depend on anybody else to handle them for him, and he ran him out of there after uh, Dutch okay, got let me busted. say one thing. Hey, I'm going to tell you what. A man is a real strong man when he can take a chain and bust your head wide open. But I'm going to say one thing, Rujo. You've got something with me now, brother. You've got a big issue with me, and we're going to sell it. Now, this ain't Canada. This is the South, and I don't think you've been introduced to this. But, buddy, we're going to have a match. And I want you to bring a chain. I want you to bring anything you've got. Because this is going to be with me. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell one million people. One million people watching right now, Daddy. As sure as my name is Dirty Dust, the next time we meet Rougeau, I'm going to own you, brother. I'm going to own you. Okay, Dutch. Well, let me tell you, when the Dutchman says it, he means it, friend. We're going to take time out, and we'll be back in just a moment. to go right here on Channel 3's Championship Wrestling. By golly, I'll tell you what, we're going to be looking forward to getting back into it, and you'll be interested to see the entire show. Listen, the action comes up tomorrow afternoon. Now, you understand that? Not Tuesday night. Tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. at the Louisville Gardens, you're going to see all kind of action going on. It'll have a Southern Heavyweight title match in there when the newest member of the first family will be challenging Terry Taylor. Then it'll be a Southern Tag Team match where... Jimmy Cornett's dynasty, Jesse Barr and Adrian Street will be going against the fabulous ones. And then a special added match that you'll understand a little bit later in this program when the Sheep Herders will be going against Bill Dundee and our special guest commentator on this program, Steve O. Billy, appreciate you coming out and helping as the folks will see a little bit later on. Well, that's why I kind of felt it was well, it's not really my fault, but I just didn't want everybody to think that all of everybody that lived in New Zealand, everybody that lives in Australia goes on like Johnny Boyd and Luke Williams. Mm. Now, the man that Steve-O did you a favor, and he did the wrestling promotion a favor to come up here and be a guest commentator. And them two Goliaths from New Zealand come out and jumped all over the man. Said they haven't got no opponents. Everybody's scared. Nobody wants to wrestle them. 
Well, we'll wrestle you, brother. You've got opponents now. You've got Steve-O and you've got Bill Dundee. Now, we know all about you, Johnny Boyd and Luke Williams. They'll come out here and they'll talk one great fight. They'll tell you how big and bad they are. Well, you guys are bad, but you're not invincible. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you know Steve-O or not, but he's been all around. He's been in Japan. He's been all over the world, just like y'all have. And he's had champions just like y'all have. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Boydie. We're not coming to wrestle yet. I'm sure Steve-O is not coming to grab no wrist locks. It's going to be a fight, Johnny Boyd and Luke Williams, because i got something to prove. I'm not done with y'all. The last little shamoise I had with him, we never quite got it really finished. Well, I think I got you, number Boyd, and I got yours, Luke Williams. And Steve-O and Bill Dundee's going to come down to that ring and they're leaving the winners. All right, I want to see it tomorrow afternoon when Bill and Steve-O get it on with the sheep herders in there. And you make your point to be there at 3 o'clock. Remember, that will be a special added match. Stay tuned to the end of this program. You'll understand it, but be there tomorrow away here in just a moment with some more action but right now i want to talk to uh, someone who is involved in a very big match coming up the manager jim cornett glad to meet you do the people know what kind of match that we're involved in do the people understand a southern tag team championship match with the fabulous one stan lane and steve kern is that right well, let me tell you something. I've spent a lot of extra time, and my mother spent a lot of extra money to get this match, the first tag team championship that the dynasty has gone after. And I want it for personal reasons as well as professional ones, because when Stan Lane and Steve Kern come to the ring, and all those girls line up to see them, the smell of cheap perfume makes me sick to my stomach. Now, I've got these men pumped up psychologically and physically. They're ready. Jesse Barr, they say he's sadistic. Jesse, that may just be right. You know, I've been a champion since I was five years old. We're going to take those belts from the fabulous ones, and then we're going to take them and twist their arms around and just give them a little bit of punishment just for... And I know for it. sure, for one thing, that Adrian Street is looking forward to this match as well. Is that right, Adrian? This is the one I've been looking forward to. I really want to get my hands on these guys. I mean, even before I came to this place, they've been imitating me. They've been... Their hair... I mean, Kern and Stan Lane have been trying to imitate you. They've imitating me. They've, they've grown their hair and they've blown their hair to try to look like me and to try to act like me. I've got my own music, the music I sing to myself. They brought this other silly music, they're not even performing on it. As far as I'm concerned, imitation is supposed to be the best form of flattery. They look like two little ducks trying to imitate a swan. They may be pretty, but I am beautiful. I mean beautiful. I mean, Jimmy so Cornette, this is a strange combination, uh, to say the That's least. That's exactly right. They've Kern been and Stan covered. Lane. I tell you, they're big, they're strong. Oh, they are the God. champions. Any special they're strategy big, They're strong. They're just like dinosaurs. Oh, They've got million-dollar bodies and ten-cent brains, and if they're not yeah. careful, <laughs> they're going to be extinct. I can't help but notice you got a little black and blue one mark around your eye. How, how did that come to happen? Don't even talk about my black and blue marks. I, this was one of embarrassing moments in my life, and it will never happen again. All right, we're going to throw it back uh, over to Lance here. I want to say big, important match. Tag Team Championship action. Hey, Steve, and talking about the fabulous ones, I got to tell you, this uh, uh, duo that creates excitement everywhere they look, by golly, we got some interesting tape we want you to take a look at now. Here it is, the fabulous one.
fabulous ones, and we're ready to go. Let's get everybody in the ring, and uh, we're set for our next bout, which will be a match with Bobby Fulton and Carl Thanks Fergie Bob, going Bob, against Colin Adrian Caldwell. Street and Jesse Barb. Looking for the action. Let's get in the ring now. We're running behind here. Let's get it on. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. They want to show their friends what the fabulous one used to look like before exotic Adrian. Okay, Adrian, let's hit the ring and we got to go. This one will be a one fall, 15 minute time limit about. One fall, 15 minutes in time. Introducing on the right hand side of the screen a duo coming in first from Columbus, Ohio, Bobby Fulton. Wrestling out of the Memphis area, Carl Fergie and their opponents this afternoon out of the dynasty of Jimmy Cornette. Introducing from the Royal Forest of Dean, the exotic Adrian Street and his partner from Portland, Oregon, Jesse Barr in the corner. In attendance, Miss Linda and, of course, manager Jimmy Cornette. The referee is Jerry Calhoun. It's one fall, 15 minutes in time. We're about set and ready to go. Well, I tell you, this Adrian Street, I don't think I've ever seen anybody quite like him. <laughs> I don't think you ever will again, either. If he got locked in a, in a, in a telephone booth with all mirrors, he'd be there for a long time. <laughs> that is Adrian Street, but I tell you the thing, uh, superstar Bill Dundee said it pretty good. He said, you know, he's come to the conclusion that this guy is just a foot on, brother. He, he leads you astray, and then he'd beat your brains out with anything he can get his hands on. Just a tactic to kind of lull you to the sleep to try to worry oh, about something else. But I tell you, he's... And the big guy that's starting out for him, Jesse Barr, can flat wrestle. Former Olympian starting against Carl Fergie. Here we go, Jesse Barr, Carl Fergie, and our guest commentator, Steve O. You know, I heard a lot about Jesse Barr. You know, when Jimmy Carter had the Olympics boycotted, uh, I heard he was, you know, one of the ones trying out to be on the Olympic team. It had to be a tremendous disappointment for him. Oh, good move by Carl Fergie. Yep. Arm drag takedown. Big Carl. Whoa, off his feet. Got him off his feet. Adrian Street backing up into the corner. Moving in. Leg trip. Takes the man down. Fergie. Underhooks with the leg. Adrian Street back on top. Jesse Byer sticking his foot through the rope. Chair. The referee trying to get him to break. Got him in the corner. A bad place to be. Fergie trying to roll out of trouble. Street, oh, with a forearm uppercut. Putting a few more on him in the corner. Come on, referee. You got to step in there to break it up. A reversal into the corner. Slick moves to get away. A tag is made. Just about slow to get into the ring. The pace slowing down a little bit. Jimmy Cornette jumping up, telling him to slow it down a little bit now. Carl Fergie, a ring veteran. Not too many scientific moves there, but he's got him down on the mat, right where he wants him to be. Into the turnbuckle. Whoa, big shoulder. He missed. The tag is made. Fulton comes in. Fergie cuts off the ring. So that Jesse Barr cannot make the tag. A handful of hair back into control, into the eyes. Jesse Barr couldn't even tell if he was hit that time. Tremendous Neela. Knocking him right off his feet. Power slam position. Down to the mat. Outside the ring, Adrian Street leading the cheerleading. He picks him up again. Backbreaker. Puts one hand on the chin, the other hand on the leg, forcing the pressure on the back. Jimmy Cornette, a fanatic up there, yelling to his man, just about to put more pressure on him. Adrian Street waiting his turn. Into the corner. He hooks his leg up underneath it. The tag is made. Oh, they're all four in the ring now. The referee's going to have to make order here. He's going to have to get the man out of the ring first. Adrian Street continues to put in the boot in the corner. They got him hung up. The referee's got to break the hole. 
Jimmy Cornette just overly pleased with what's happening. Jesse Bob pulling on the man's hair. He's hooked up into the corner. That's not a very uh, good position to be in at all. The referee could have grounds for disqualification here if they cannot get the men to break in the corner. Finally, Fergie, or Barr, rather, let go right at the uh, at the count of three, and here comes Fergie after him. <laughs> Jesse just ripped the chair right out from under Linda. Uh, as Fergie was coming around, he was going to get on him for pulling the hair of Bobby Jimmy Fulton. Jimmy Cornette almost made a fast exit there, too. Ooh. There's that uppercut forearm that Adrian Street uses. It's very effective. Bobby Fulton! Hey, hey. Oh, Jesse walked into that one. Fergie cleaning house, pouring that up out of the ring. He gets knocked off. He goes flying. Adrian Street knocked down. Fergie cleaning house, body slam. The tag is made. Setting them up. They've got him. It's an arm whip into the rope. A double elbow. Street down. Fulton continues to hammer away. Street. Picking up the leg. The count of one, two. Oh, Jesse Byers got his foot on the inside. The referee couldn't see it. There's a count of three. There was a count of three. Their shoulders were down. Adrian Street celebrating the victory. Street and Jesse Barr end up with a victory over uh, Fergie and Fulton. But I'll tell you, Fergie and Fulton gave them a hard way to go. And it was through the combination of double teaming right there at the end. We're going to take time out. We've got more action. Be back to it in just a moment. Okay, back to Wave Country's Championship Wrestling with lots more action still to go. Believe me when I tell you that. February the 26th, today. Right tonight, as a matter of fact, down in Madisonville, Kentucky, Championship Wrestling comes. Thursday, March the 10th, Columbia, Kentucky, at the Adair County School, sponsored by the Fraternal Order of Police. Those coming up, you be attention to them when you're around the territory. Now, how about tomorrow afternoon? We've already told you that's when Championship Wrestling is at Louisville Gardens. 3 p.m. tomorrow, Philip Ruggio and Bobby Fulton will be going against the Bruise Brothers, and you got to be there to see them. Jacques Ruggio and Dutch Mantel. Oh, boy, is that going to raise some roofs. Then Terry Taylor uh, will be going against Kenya Condori in a Southern heavyweight title match, followed by a Southern tag team title match where Jesse Barr and Adrian Street with Cornet in the corner go against the fabulous ones. The final event, well, stay tuned for all of it. You'll see the Sheepherders against Bill Dundee and Steve O. Be there tomorrow. Okay, Steve. All right, Lance, I just want to take uh, time to interview the fabulous... Sheep herders are fabulous sheep herders. Look, there's nothing fabulous about the sheep herders. We're the greatest team in wrestling history, and we're going to prove it either day. Hey, the fabulous ones. We took the fabulous out the fabulous ones. We took the super out of superstar, and we took the king of flawless. And now nobody wants to wrestle us. Eddie Marlin, there's a lot of unsigned contracts out there. Why are your men running scared? Why are you sticking in too scared to wrestle to New Zealanders? Explain it to me, because we're going to explain it to you, and we're going to explain in the ring. Because from now on, we're going to hurt wrestlers. You make note, and you mention it very often. We're well, you don't have to point your finger and get mad at everybody. You know, you have a point to make, you've got to come out, and you can take it normally. But you here for a while, but you watch this. All right, taking it up to the ring. I tell you, Lance, I didn't get a chance to conduct much of an interview. I can remember one time they had a... A big tag team tournament in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia. The Sheep Herders were there, and they got very far. They did very well. They seem to be very, very well. angry about oh, something. Boy, I mean, they are some kind of rough. Are they man. having problem getting matches? Well, that's what their big story is. And, uh, of course, you can get a different opinion of every different person you talk to. But one thing everybody agrees on, they are rugged. Here we go. In this particular match, it's a one-fall 15-minute time limit, Bob. The opponents today for the Sheep Herders in the ring right now is young Robert Reed. 
He has teamed up with young Philip Ruggio, Jacques' brother, and they have the unenviable task of going against the brutal sheep Oh, herders they are brutal, team. too, oh, boy. Oh, He's man. just putting the boots to this guy. Slams him with that big elbow, and here comes Luke Williams taking over from Jonathan Boyd. Oh, a flying elbow, sending him to the mat. Good tag team worked him. These men are keeping a fresh man into the ring, double teaming. Ooh. The referee's got to get him to break before the count of five. Otherwise, it's ground for disqualification. Good teamwork. Right at the throat. You notice that. And Boyd has no hesitation about stretching the disqualification. Oh, did you see the, the way he threw him down to the mat? Yep. Boy, these guys are really trying to steal some punishment out of this guy. Yeah, it's a shame a youngster like Robert Me Reed who is just breaking into it and... Uh, a headbutt. Taking him with the head into the side of the ribs, he went down like he was shot, and he's not moving too much. He now, really needs a tag on Rujo if he can get over to Phillip, but Jonathan Boyd. Oh, he's rubbing it in yeah, now a little yeah. bit. Oh, just a ploy to get him ready. Watch this. Setting him up. Knee drop with it over his shoulder. With that extra weight down there, and now he covers up Robert Reed. One, two, three, and that's it. The bout ends up well, with uh, the so sheep bad, herders Mark, but you sure being dealt victorious. You said you were going to do it, and you sure dealt some punishment out of that guy. He didn't even allow Rujo to get into the ring. You shut up. Now, wait a you minute. You shut up. No, wait a minute now. You don't have to hey, be Marlin. They asked me to come out and conduct an interview, Eddie and Marlin. I'm just trying to conduct an interview. I'm trying to say something, Eddie All Marlin. Right. You shut your mouth. Eddie Marlin, we want men to wrestle. Nobody will sign our contract. Why? Hey, you're a wrestler. Or the USA. I'm a wrestler. Don't push at me. Now, don't start that stuff. Hey, come on. What's... All what? right. Hey. Let's get Eddie or somebody out here. They've grabbed Steve-O and ripped his clothes right off. Well, let's get... Can we get somebody out here? Come on, Jonathan. Why don't you guys knock it off with that? The guys have just been here today. And, hey. Bill Dundee coming out. Steve O back on his feet again. Steve, who is not actively wrestling since his wrist was hurt. A year and a half ago, making a pretty good accounting of himself right now is Dundee going after Luke Williams out the door and Jonathan Boyd trying to get away from it himself as uh, Billy Chan, I appreciate you coming out, Bill. No excuse in that kind of lousy attitude that the sheep herders had. Steve, well, I apologize. Just ask Eddie Marlin to come out here for one minute. Well... Eddie Marlin, would you please come out here for one minute? Yeah. No, wait a minute now. Hey, I'm sorry, man. One of these guys can't get matches. They don't want to wrestle. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me about sticking around for a while. We're I'd like to stick around just the way what you do. They want a pony. If he signs it, I'll sign it, and they got two opponents, That's brother. Anytime they want it. If you want the match, brother, you've got it. You've got it. You got I'm it, telling you. All right. Okay. Yeah, well, that's going to be Thanks interesting to see Steve back I'm in gonna with Billy. Stick around. We're going to get a match. Okay. Good. Glad to have it. Get some clothes, Steve, and we'll see you a little later. We're going to be back in just a moment. six-man tag will be the Marauder, the Apocalypse and Sabu facing the team of Philip Rujo, Sweet Brown Sugar, and Bill Dundee. Your referee is Jerry Calhoun, and here we go. We don't have much time, as a matter of fact, but we did want to get in just as much action as we could, and while we won't have time for a long match, at least we'll have a chance to see all of these guys in action. Sabu in there right now with Philip Arujo. Here 
Here comes the apocalypse with Rujo. Dundee and Sugar back up in the corner, and Phillips could tag them and do himself a lot of good right now, I can tell you for a fact. We're about a minute into this action as Rujo draped over the top rope. And our time running very close to the end. Six-man tag. Now it's the Marauder and Rujo going at it. And we're down to about 30 seconds in time. A little bit uh, more than that. Yeah, 30 seconds in time to go. Dundee comes in. Bang. Apocalypse Marauder. Sabu. And it looks like our bell is going to run out before there is time for it. Woo! Brown Sugar with a super drop kick. Two, three. He beat it by eight seconds. Brown Sugar gets a fall for the team of Dundee, Rojo, and Sugar. We're going to have to take time out, and we're going to be back in just one moment. Tomorrow afternoon, you heard it, my friend, for the Louisville Gardens. Tomorrow afternoon, championship wrestling at 3 p.m. And boy, what an afternoon of action it's going to be. Included, you will find a Southern heavyweight title match, Southern tag team title match, and the special added match that we just got through talking about on the uh, program. Bill Dundee and Steve-O will be going against the Sheep Artists. Now, Jimmy Cornette will have Adrian Street and Jesse Barr going for the titles against the Fabulous. I've said a lot of things about the Fabulous Ones, and really I don't like to talk to about them that much. But after this match, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is going to be out of business because they're not going to want to do any specials, they're not going to want to do any tapes, they're not going to want to do anything on them the way Adrian and Jesse are going to make them look. We'll have an opportunity to find out tomorrow afternoon. Let me tell you something before you say anything. I don't want you or any of your commentators putting their hands on me oh. ever again. You understand that? Because you just seen what bloody happened to one of them that done it. Now, here's Mr. Steve-O over the bloody hill as far as I'm concerned. Hurt his hand, had to be out of wrestling for a while. He was a great wrestler. Look, we do our studies. We do our studies. But you made a mistake. You made a mistake. You didn't do your bloody studies. While you were outside, a good old southern boy trying to be a man, putting your hand on men, you got to be punished for what you do wrong. And then Billy Dundee comes jumping out here to help you. Yes, if he hadn't have came, we would have stripped you naked right here on TV. And Dundee, we're going to strip you naked because the O in his name is going to stand for O, 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 O. And Dundee... The superstar is going to come over here to me, and we're going to squash you like a grape. Well, you'll have some competition tomorrow afternoon in Louisville Gardens, 3 p.m., when the Sheep Herders go against Bill Dundee and Steve O. Don't you dare miss any of that action. Make your plans to be there tomorrow afternoon. Six-man tag action paid it off in there, my friend, as the team of Dundee, Sugar, and Philip Rougeau uh, end up winning a fall, and that was enough. Boy, he just barely beat it by eight seconds the time expiration of time or it would have been a draw but sugar with a great drop kick ended up doing it now let's go back and take a look at the action that took place today and we had a pile of it out here we had a match that we were really looking forward to the terry taylor jacques rougeau southern heavyweight championship match we had it rougeau seems to be getting worse about cutting corners on it a guy with great natural talent but boy he went to his tight Got a chain out. Taylor got him when he was distracted with Dutch Mantel and uh, ended up rolling him into a 1-2-3 count. Terry Taylor retaining the Southern heavyweight title. Additionally, Abdullah the Great was here with Sonny King, and that was a one-sided match in which young Tom Maley didn't really have too much of a chance with a very large Abdullah the Great. Additionally, it was the team of Street and Barr who had all they could handle with Fulton and Fergie in there, but they came out victorious, winning it, the Sheep Herders, a one-sided match against the team of Philip Rougeau and Robert Reed. Philip never did even get into the ring. That's about all the time that we've got. We'll be looking for Dave back next week. Until we see you, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling. <laughs>